Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I'm going to reveal 17 years of secrets and mistakes to get great, amazing cityscape photography. I'm going to show you the fastest way to go from amateur to pro. The first five years of my life, I did lots of mistakes because I didn't know the secrets of composition and lighting. My name is Serge Remeli, and my work is in 120 galleries around the world, like this gallery here, and I've published seven coffee table books. And in this video, I'm going to try to reproduce some of my best work. So we're here in Paris. The weather is absolutely awful. Uh, it's been raining all day. I'm behind Notre Dame, which is still under renovations, almost finished or soon to be finished. And my idea in this video was to show you what it takes to get incredible cityscape photography. The weather is very bad. I'm still going to challenge myself to recreate some of my best work in the last 17 years. So for example, this is my website, sergeramdiphotos.com, my Paris gallery. I'm going to try to reproduce uh, maybe this photo. I don't know if I can pull it up. This is like an amazing uh, sunset that I got pretty close to where I have to find where it is on the bridge. I'm going to try to reproduce that if we can catch some kind of good light. And then I'm also going to go on the top of the Tour Montparnasse, the highest tower in Paris, to get this epic shot of Paris by night. It's one of my best setting photos in galleries. I want to try to go to Montmartre and uh, get some amazing shot. Montmartre is the oldest part of Paris. Try to reproduce that. And I'm going to bring somebody with me who is a very beginner photographer and see what she can do with a pro camera. And then I'll show her some tips to get amazing photo in the oldest part of Paris. But I'm going to try myself to reproduce this photo of Montmartre, which I absolutely love. Last but not least, my dream is to get another sunrise on the Pont des Arts, the art bridge, a beautiful bridge in Paris, and one of the widest views in Paris. Okay, so the bridge you see behind me, which is right between Notre Dame and the Hôtel de Ville, which is like the city hall, that specific bridge is this photo that I showed you. And I remember the first time I got it, I got very lucky. I was like driving through a scooter through Paris and it was a crazy sunset. And I always had my tripod and my camera. At the time it was an EOS 350 from Canon, like the cheapest Canon camera you could buy 15 years ago. And it was this crazy, crazy sunset. So I came on and I took an HDR photo, like three exposures, and I made like this photo. It was one of my best in the gallery. Now, I don't think, I mean, I don't know if you see the weather, this is November. I don't think we're going to get uh, you know, a sunset. Let's go to the bridge and see if we can find a good composition. What I usually do during the day when it's the bad weather is I look for composition. But the light is awful. And then I come back to the good light and then I get the shot. So let's go see if we can find some interesting composition. They completely renovated the bridge. It's completely new. So let's check it out. So it's raining now. I mean, you know, this is great for black and white, but that's not what I want. You know? I don't remember exactly how I framed it. I think it's over there. I'm going to try different framings, but uh, this is what happens. You know, you travel to a city and you get an awful light. What's the trick? Well, the trick, mesdames and messieurs, is to come back at the magic 15 minutes window. Any city in the world has this magic 15 minutes window. And what is that? That's right at the blue hour. That's after the sunset. When you have an overcast sky like this, Sunset still happens, you just don't see it. But after the sunset, the sky becomes very blue, the light of the city comes up, and boom, you get the blue hour. It's about 15 minutes long. You don't want to miss it, and that's probably what I'm going to do. But first, let's find the Fermi, and then let's come back at the blue hour and get the shot, mesdames et messieurs, get the shot. Okay, so I remember, the thing is, when I shot this 12 years ago, cars were passing by and they blocked it. The city hall, now it's a walk-in pass, so I don't, I'm not going to get the streaks of light. And the streak of light was very important to me. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, but this is the shot. I remember now I had the leading lines here, but at all the cars, there's no more cars. They, they totally changed the, the bridge, is totally different, and, the, and there's no more cars. So it's going to be hard to reproduce the same shot, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to be using today is uh, basically the Sony 7R5, as usual, with a 2472.8. Um, I use it a lot for video, that's why it's a 2.8. And I have a little ND filter that I'm going to put inside the camera for later to take some long exposure. 
I got this really cool tripod. Let me show you. This is a, a Siri tripod. Um, and this is the really right staff bowl head, which I've had it for 12 years. This tripod, I, I, I break tripods so fast, so I change them every two years. But I haven't changed a bowl head in like 12 years. Really right staff, it's the really right staff. Allons-y, mesdames et messieurs, let's do it. Wait for one person to come, and only one, to give the scale of the place. But okay, there's a couple there. I'm just waiting. Okay, now, 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 go, 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 go. Boom. So yeah, what we want is we don't want to have like, like this too close to the frame or even like this or too much road, you know, or not enough road. It's, you know, finding something. I like the idea of having this lamp here, this. Uh, yeah, that should be a good framing, but I don't like that. I don't like that fence at all. I really don't like it. And I think I'm going to start doing some loan exposures. The good thing about the Sony 7R5 is you don't need a remote to do long exposure. I can program the camera to do two minutes if I want, and I'm going to, I'm going to put uh, an ND filter. The reason I'm doing a long exposure tonight is because I want, to, I want the water to be flat, very flat. And I'm, I'm going to try to go like two minutes long exposure. We'll see if it works. So uh, the one, the composition I like the most is the leading line. There is apps that can help you, but I, I like to always take like a shot. And then I see now, the great thing about this is I can, I can program anything in this camera. I can do like 20 minutes if I want to. So what I usually do is I take like one and a half minute. I take a shot at 100 ISO F7. And I see if it's too dark, I add more time. If it's too bright, I take out time. I want to get long time because I want to get very flat water. I want to get stretchy clouds and I want to get all this light of this bicycle to be a long exposure. This is this bridge is very peculiar because you are in, in between Notre Dame and the Citadel of Paris, which is two of my favorite monuments. And um, it's just one of the best places in Paris. And we have the Conciergerie, which I have no idea what it is. I think it's the police station. You have the Justice Palace and you have some police station, but the Conciergerie is a beautiful building. I love the shape of the round and it's gonna be a great anchor point for my photo with the leading line here. So this is absolutely perfect, it's magnifique, it's incredible. Vive Paris! And boom, I'm excited. It's incredible, it's amazing, it's sharp. You always have to check your sharpness when you take your photos, especially five seconds. I was so afraid of the vibration and boom, I love it because I got all the leading lines from all the bikes for five minutes. The water is flat, like it's, it doesn't get more flat, it's incredible. Mwah. Unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get another good shot because the weather just got really worse and worse and worse. And I wanted something else in the blue hour shot. So I don't think it's going to work at all. I'm very, very upset. I was expecting this. I mean, come on, it's November anyway. I'm really not happy with what I'm getting because it's like, there's no leading line. Uh, it's just a really, really gray blue hour. There's not much texture in the sky. It's a complete fitter. I'm not happy with what I'm getting at all. Okay, so the R bridge is really not working out. It's too much cloud, it's too dark. I'm not getting the shot that I wanna go. I can't do a five minutes long exposure because there's people walking on wood. You can't do a, a more than like five seconds of exposure. So, you know what? I'm gonna go to Montmartre. Montmartre is the oldest part of Paris. And even if the weather is really bad, this is the one place in Paris I'm hoping I'm gonna get some good photos because the lighting is amazing. Even if it rains, you can get great photo. Even better if it rains. So, allons-y, let's go to Montmartre. All right, so in this part of the video, I had a crazy idea. What if we take somebody who is not a professional photographer, like this beautiful Julie? You're not a professional photographer. I'm not. All right, and I'm gonna give her the Sony A7R5 with a 2470 2.8 GSM Master II the flagship, the best mirrorless ever made by Sony and the best lens made by Sony for this kind of cityscape photography. We are here in Montmartre, the oldest part of Paris. And 
Basically, I'm gonna ask you, everything is on automatic. The autofocus, you just press the shutter and it takes a photo. Do your best to take a beautiful photo of Montmartre. And then I'm gonna show her how I would do it to get the shot that we're gonna to try to sell in galleries. Are you up for the challenge? I'm up for the challenge. Let's do it, Julie. Thank you. I'm trying to take a picture here. I kind of like the street, but I'm not, I'm not really sure about the light. So what I'm trying to do is trying to find an angle that's kind of interesting, I guess, and maybe something with some depth, something with tourists and people walking, so that there's something happening in the shot, there's more action, and I like the water drops that just trained over here. So yeah, Julie is clearly not a photographer. So on this first photo, the problem is that there's a lot of construction on the right side. The, you know, there's this car passing by, people passing by. She needs to be a bit more careful. Um, you know, composition is telling a story. Composition is arranging the elements of a photo to tell a story. What can we do to tell a strong story? What can we take out that's gonna take a better story? On the second photo, we have like a lamp right in the middle where there's people passing by. There is a good idea there. Maybe if we do a long exposure, we can erase some of the people. That could be the solution. Now on this photo, we don't see the rain at all because she did a too slow long exposure. We, maybe we can try a faster exposure to get the water drop, bam, frozen in time. Taking this one, Julie. So I asked Julie to take one more photo, especially of this view. It's really hard because there's a lot of people. You're on the tripod, you're doing the long exposure, but I think you're a little too wide. Yeah, I mean, let's see. It, it's not bad, but you're a little, there's a lot of light on both sides and I really want to talk about that. So I think what we're going to do is try to put the camera, uh, well, we might crop in the middle, but I think we need to zoom in a little more. Okay. So, um, okay, the, try to see if you can get this out, like zoom in a bit more so that we only have this. I'm going to try to, I think you should go, because you lost the Sacre Coeur, which mm -hmm. is a church. I would like to have it, so maybe go to the other side of the sidewalk. Let's see if we can get the road without all that light. And, uh, but we we need to get the church back. Ah, you see, we're getting it back. Kind of like this? But we have to shoot it like this. Okay. I'll, sh I'll show you. So we're going to have to put it like this. I don't have my L bracket, but uh, yeah, mm. I think that's going to be the solution if I want to get the church. Okay, one trick is I'm going to tell it to zoom in uh, so that, because as soon as you mean, it's going to make the church come closer to us. And you see the, the little lines here, I don't like it to be too much, uh, too close to the border. I kind of like that there is a little bit of uh, pavement. Uh, and then you see, as we zoom in, we get back a little bit the Sacré Coeur. I kind of like that. Now that's, that's a much better thing. So what I told Julie to do is uh, we're trying to get this beautiful restaurant and a little bit of the Sacré Coeur, the beautiful church. And so I told her to move away because there's a lot of uh, work and renovations and to frame it in a way so that we only have the restaurant and the Sacré Coeur. And then we have this white stripe, you know, the mm -hmm. famous white stripes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a leading line. It's not as good as the photo that we got, but I think you did a great job. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank well you. done. All right, Judy, so uh, take this camera. Uh, one of the key things when you take photos is you want to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So the idea is you look what story you want to tell and what story you want to tell and what can be taken out that's not helping your story, mm -hmm. okay? So there's a lot of people there. My idea is I'm, we're going to do a bit of a long exposure to get rid of the people which are walking. Okay. And we're going to wait for a moment where there's not much people and try to get a very nice shot. I want. I want to take out like any trash, any buses, any people so that we have just the pink house and this beautiful view. All right, okay, let's try that. So we're going to work on a tripod because we're going to do a slow shutter speed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're going to put, uh, the, you're going to put it on A. A stands for aperture value. You, you're going to put, you're going to touch this and put the lens at F22 because I want to stop the, li the light from coming in. Okay. 
to force a long exposure because it's not much light. The camera is going to need a long exposure. So put it on F22. Okay. I'm going to put the camera on the self timer so that when I press the shutter, it waits two seconds and then it's going to take a six second exposure. So that's pretty long. Okay. So now you need to frame it so that you only have the pink house and that wall, but not this, uh, you know, and we, and then we're going to wait until there's not much people. So you can move it around so you have a nice frame. I will check it. Just make sure you just have the pink house pretty wide. You can, you know, you can change how wide you want it. We want the pink house and the wall. Let's try that. Okay. Let me see the framing. Yeah. So one thing you have to make sure on your framing is, is you want to look all around your framing and make sure it, you don't have something that's important. That's kind of half in and half out. Ah, okay. And, uh, right now okay no but you're pretty good you did you did you did good okay. so let's see if we can show this yeah it's pretty good we're gonna wait because we have what a 13 second exposure now okay i'm actually gonna turn this wheel here uh because it's a bit bright i want to get some details in the sky so when you shoot digital you want to underexpose the photo a little bit so this is called exposure compensation meaning if you go like this it gets dark if you go like this it gets bright that's okay. as simple as that. So I want it slightly dark. Actually, take it now because there's only three people. Take it, just press the shutter. Okay. Press the shutter. See, it waits two seconds and it's going to wait four seconds. Oh, okay. okay. See, it's pretty clean. The people are, people are kind of erased. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really nice shot. Uh, let's see if we can do a bit of a longer exposure. So take a shot and let, let's see what happens. Maybe we get a car, but that's fine. The car is going to make a, a nice trail. So it's going to shoot for 13 seconds. Now you see people are moving. Uh -huh. Wow, we might get it with nobody. We might get it with nobody. Okay. Wow, there's nobody. It was just one car. Shit, the car came while we were shooting. Yeah, but even that's... Okay, cool. Oh, it was 30. Oh, 30. Okay. Look at that. So we get we get this big red line, which is not, not, not bad. You see, everybody's erased. So now, okay. And you see, if people are moving in your in your shot, mm -hmm. but because it's a 13 second, they should they should not be in, in your frame as long as they're moving. If they're not moving, okay. they will be in a frame. I want the shot with nobody, nobody. That's what I'm going to sell to the gallery. Zero people. Ah, oh, no, there is nobody. See, we got it. Okay. We got it. We just have a bit of light here, yeah. but we got it with almost nobody. Oh, that's cool. Okay, cool. Try to do it again when a car is passing by, so that we uh, when the car just passed by, so we get like a nice trail. Uh, of light okay. if the car goes inside if it goes here no okay go for it so what that's going to do is that it's going to make like a red line all the way on the road Ooh. see oh yeah the right trail the red trail yeah. i kind of prefer the other one but this one is not so bad it's kind of cool we made it two good photos which are in the box now let's go to the highest point in paris the tour montparnasse mesdames and messieurs We are on the top of the biggest tower in Paris. This is one of the nicest view shooting west. And what I'm hoping is I want a beautiful night with all the city lights on and I'm going to shoot uh, my tripod. It doesn't go high enough. So I'm going to be resting on this to try to get a good shot. Right now it's okay. You can see the shots I'm getting, but I believe it's going to be even nicer in 20 minutes because you really want to have Paris by night with all the lights on. It's going to be amazing. On this one, the secret is you want to be uh, either using a remote or half a second, two second timer, and you're like at f7. I think I can be like half a second stable on this thing, make it make the camera very stable. Make sure you're not touching camera when you take the photo. I'm gonna try to be at 100 ISO, and boom, we can get this without a tripod and great quality. I don't need to do long exposure because there's no water, and you know, I'm not gonna get a freshy cloud, but I'm gonna get Paris by night. It's gonna be amazing, incredible. Okay, so on this one, it was much harder than I thought because the tripod didn't work. It was not high enough. And so I had to be at 2.8. Good to have the 24-7 to 2.8. 640 ISO and 125th second. And then I was wide and I was short and I'm really happy with the shot, but it was hard. I thought I was not gonna get it.
Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. Welcome to the Art Bridge, my favorite bridge in Paris. It's a beautiful wooden bridge. It's got the view on the Louvre on the right side. It's got the view on the Pont Neuf. It's got the view on the French Academy. It's incredible. It's beautiful. We're going to try to get some photo. We got up really early. It's freezing to try to catch the sunrise. Let's do this. I'm going to put back my indie filter because I want to get a long exposure with the, with, with the sunrise before the sun gets, because when the sun is going to be there, it's going to be hard to do long exposure. What's on the wings on the art bridge is a lot of people are walking. It's a very thin wood bridge, so you can get vibration. Ooh, nice. Let me see if it's sharp. Nice, but not bright enough. I'm going to go. I am going to go for like one well, 30 second exposure. I'm going to go for 30 second. Okay, I'm trying 30 second exposure F7. Just beautiful. And one thing that I try to do when I shoot these kind of things is to uh, uh, not kind of center it. I, I, I do both. I center it and then I take some photos with a little bit of sky and a bit of water. And then I do the reverse, a little bit of water and a bit of sky. And I see what works the best on the big screen. On the big screen. Mwah. This this view I don't like. This is the Louvre, but there's so much water. If you have too much water, it's too much negative space. I just don't like this view. I mean, it's a nice view, but it's not as incredible as this one. Plus, the sun is rising here, so the good light is here, and the bad light is over there. I don't like this photo because I have the bench here, which is like half in and half out on the border of the photo. You have to really look at the border of the photo. I need to position myself better so that the bench and the lamp is very clean, is not layered on top of each other. It's important to layer things properly so that people can read the image really nice. It is very important, madame et messieurs, very important. The lady here is okay to pose for me because I wanted to get somebody in the scene. It's, it's important to have somebody in the scene so we get the scale of the scene. The problem is that I cannot do, do the ND filter. I need to do a, a much shorter exposure. Wow. This was an amazing sunrise. I'm very happy. So you see, Telling a strong story and taking out what's not helping your story is the most important. In a crowded city like Paris, it's really hard. Now make sure, make sure you subscribe, mesdames et messieurs, because the next video is going to be how I retouch this, and I'm going to give you some really cool free preset. But you will lose it forever if you don't subscribe. And if you want to help me, like this video at the same time.